it's your girl, Rachel, from What's Up Dallas Magazine, and I have another amazing guest on my show. How are you, sir? Hello, Rachel. Nice to talk to you. Yes, likewise. So um, Justin and I have been talking behind the scenes, and he has a really awesome business. He's a great entrepreneur. He knows what he's doing. He's got a lot of exciting pro uh, projects coming up, so we are going to talk about those things today. So, um, Justin, can you let our viewers know your social media and where to find you? Yeah, so on Instagram and LinkedIn and all those places is Sloan Capital. Um, my name's Justin Sloan. I'm a serial entrepreneur uh, right out of high school, started a pretty big chain of cell phone retail stores, and then flipped that into real estate to the point where I started buying some of the strip malls that we were located in and all that. And then a couple of years ago, we found Everbowl and, and now started to bring that to Dallas and now to Austin next and uh, starting to have some fun with that. So that's super exciting. I know a lot of people are just like, well, you're going to talk business. How is that exciting? But business is exciting when you're a business owner. I agree. So it's something new and different every day. And it's fun to create things from scratch and learn about all these new, amazing cities and people. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun for us. Fantastic. I want to know how you got your start. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, cell phones was really my first like, you know, intro into if you work harder and you sell more things, you can make more money. Um, so I was in high school. I was working at a local mall and uh, saw, you know, I, I was getting a prepaid phone and stuff. Ended up making friends with some of the people working in the business. And before I know it, I was working in a mall selling cell phones. And this was cool for me because I was used to making six or seven dollars an hour and no commission, no tips or anything like that. And now all of a sudden when I went into work, if I sold some stuff, you can make some more money. Mm -hmm. And so kind of parlayed that, you know, as I got into college, uh, realized I was better at selling phones and selling things than I was at sitting in schoolwork. And so eventually I took everything that I had and I opened my first cell phone store. I put all um, all my money in it. I was the only employee. I worked open to close seven days a week for several months and then ultimately was able to hire someone and, and grow that business. So, Wow, that's like quite a quite a journey and quite a story. What, a, <laughs> what opening, opening statement. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like it was forever ago, but obviously, you know, now as we're restarting another business, it's like getting back on the horse, right? And and essentially building those steps, building the team, executing the game plan. And, uh, you know, this second and third time now is it gets a lot easier and, and more fun from different points of view. Absolutely. And I know having a capital company, you, you're definitely investing your money in other different ventures. So I want to kind of like uh, piggyback on that conversation. You said you opened up with the cell phone company and then you moved over to real estate. Is that right? Yeah. So I had owned my cell phone stores. Uh, I was 20 years old when I opened my first store. Um, you know, I had no business owner ex experience, but I was really good at selling uh, phones. And after about six years, the company that I was selling started to have some really uh, big issues. They weren't upgrading their towers. Apple wouldn't sell them the iPhone. And ultimately, the company lost about 30% of their customers in a year. And my baby, my business uh, went from being a hero business to not a great business. And we had to look at other options, right? And so I was talking with a lot of different people and somebody said, you should really look at real estate. And I said, well, I don't, you know, have time for that. I don't know what I'm, I don't have any idea about real estate other than being a tenant. And they said, well, find a property manager. And that was the first thing. So I started, you know, on my day off or half a day off, I'd go look at properties and then I learned how to paint them. And then I learned how to, you know, replace kitchen cabinets. And before I know it, you know, start that business and learning that as well in order to make sure that, you know, my income was diversified. And then, as you mentioned, uh, over time, that got into investing into companies, investing into other people's real estate deals. Um, and then when I found Everbowl, I was able to not only invest into it, um, purchase the rights to the state of Texas, and then get back into growing the business as well. So, Yeah, that's awesome. I always heard, uh, you know, to in order to be a successful business owner, you can't just have your money just in one stream of income like you're it's smart to have it in different form different places yeah. i i can tell you that i was one of those people that had a hundred percent of my money all in the cell phone business um i was you know i thought that was my bread and butter and it was going to make me money forever and you know as as we made more money i spent more money and grew my lifestyle and all that kind of fun stuff and then that brick wall moment happened where i was like oh shit right i mean like it was a real scary time when the company that you trust in made some bad decisions 
Um, mm -hmm. And I had to live with those decisions. And I told myself never again, absolutely never again, do I put my future in somebody else's hands. Mm -hmm. Powerful words right there, for sure. And I want to also like talk to you, like whenever you took that risk to go from one business to the next, like, how did that feel for you? How did you overcome that risk um, mentally? Like, yeah. So one of the things that I'm pretty good at is comparing things side by side to see kind of where the risks and rewards are. And then ultimately, when I find something that I, I feel like I have a decent edge or is a better concept formula, whatever that might be, if you look at enough deals, by the time you see the really good one, you know, it's right there, you know, and people can do it. You know, I, I have buddies that are really into fantasy football. They can look on the field and tell you exactly who the best tight end is, exactly who the best, you know, how many points, all that kind of stuff. Well, I learned how to do that in real estate. I could mm -hmm. compare properties next to each other and, and tell you which was the better deal, why, et cetera. Then I learned how to do that with strip malls, then with companies and other concepts. And ultimately, if you look at enough deals, when that really great one comes across your plate, it's not like a, well, let's think about it. It's like, I can't wait to put my money to work and get going. Um, and that's kind of, I, pres I've, I've created a life that presents a lot of opportunities. And then within that, I, I can cherry pick the best opportunities when the time makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes perfect sense. And I, I know you said that you, you have Everbowl now, which you have the rights to, uh, the state of Texas and everything to be able to, you know, build your buildings here and everything. So, uh, I want to talk about like, kind of like the strip malls because I've been here forever. Um, sure. I have noticed that the the need or the want to go to the mall has actually declined in certain areas of DFW. And for you as being an investor in those kind of properties and stuff, how would you know if that strip mall was, was what you wanted to go for or not? Yeah. So when we're looking at investing into strip malls, you know, we start with location, we start with building quality, we start with the tenants that are inside of there, we look at what the tenants are paying in rent, are they paying fair rent, are they paying way over market rent, you know, and we look at the riskiness of their business, if there's a Starbucks in there, that's going to be, you know, more stable than if there's, you know, whatever, uh, one off kind of business that doesn't have a lot of experience. And so we're looking inside, like, we're taking the strip mall as a property and breaking it down into small chunks. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of strip malls are essentially five buildings in one, right? Mm -hmm. Five different leases, five different structures, five different dates, five different rent rates, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so we create formulas that allow us to benchmark those and look at them across other uh, portfolios. And then essentially, if we have a location that has great traffic count and, you know, the same way that we're looking at how do we put a business in there, oftentimes we're looking at does that would other people want to put a business in there? And if we have properties that are great locations, you know, well-maintained, fair rents, then we should never have any issues with vacancy. And unfortunately, we've been in that boat. We've been very fortunate. Oh, well, yeah, I imagine like whenever you're weighing the, the options and like, you know, the turnover of the people that are coming in and the businesses, how stable, how long they've been there, what kind of clients are there. I'm sure demographics also plays a big role in that too as well. And also if it's a new developed area, does that also play a big role in that as well? Yeah, so newer areas are obviously going to be newer built buildings that might be a little bit more expensive. So we're going to comp those against other newer buildings and maybe mm -hmm. buildings that are 10 or 15 years old. We're going to comp a little bit differently because let's be real, the maintenance on a building 10 or 15 years that, you know, that was built 10 or 15 years ago will be different than a building that was built 10 or 15 months ago. Mm -hmm. And so that all becomes part of those formulas um, of, you know, if all of a sudden we might have to replace the roof in the next five years and a roof can be six figures or more. Um, we want to make sure that that's built in and we know that kind of stuff ahead of time. Whereas if we buy a new property, we know that the roof is likely going to have a warranty and be there for, you know, and ha not have any issues. And so we can, you know, we can be a little bit more aggressive on certain things when you don't have as much maintenance on the building. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And I want to talk about this Everbowl. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, so Everbowl is bowls of things that have been around forever. Um, we started in San Diego. Uh, the company started in San Diego in 2016. When I found it, they had about 20 locations and was a whole food category that I, you know, I was born in the Midwest. 
meat and potatoes, you know, barbecue, love all that stuff. And then all of a sudden I started tasting these bowls of fruit and superfoods and I became addicted to the product. Um, it, you know, it was like eating ice cream for lunch. I felt better after I ate it and ultimately made the decision to not just invest into the company, but to take the skill set um, that our company's acquired over the last several years and put that to work to help bring it to Texas. Um, so I bought the rights to the whole state of Texas, but then I work with other franchisees. And so I own stores and we sell off territory to other franchisees and other owners. And we essentially have like this army of people that are going out and opening stores and, and bringing this concept all over. And we're at five in DFW right now. We have three more that are opening first quarter of 2024. We're getting ready to make some more announcements about new cities as well as much bigger expansions in Dallas. And, you know, when you find something that works and a product that's delicious and all that stuff, it's, you know, where I get back into that mode of how do we keep it growing and, and you know, being able to throw a grand opening every month and all that stuff, it's getting, it's getting really fun. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to go try this out because you said fresh and I was just like, okay, I'm really going to have to try this out for sure. Yeah. So, it's, you know, in the, in the smoothie industry, a lot of times it's, you know, people, you know, putting a pump of whatever into your drink and where does that come from and all of this. And so we really are trying to create the Chipotle of fruit, you know, essentially mm -hmm. where customers can go through a line and be able to create their own bowl or we have some local favorite options. And we, we want to be in that $10, $12 price point where people can have a real healthy meal, fill up and, you know, and then obviously um, with DoorDash delivery, all that kind of stuff, Uber Eats, we're able to be accessible for people when they need that that meal. And, you know, we cut all of our fruit fresh every day. We We have very high standards and we really believe over time that this is what consumers want. You know, they have a lot of burger and a lot of chicken options. We need to create some other options as well. And especially for the younger generation there. I mean, I'm, I watched firsthand what happened in San Diego as the employees started to grow up and get married and have kids. And, you know, they won't feed their families Burger King. They want to no. feed their families healthy, fresh, delicious things. And, and we want to be there so they can do it. Absolutely. And I, I love that kind of concept, especially when you're providing healthy options at an affordable price, because a lot of people, they they want the fresh, but then are like some restaurants, they charge like an extra, you know, 20 bucks for like a fruit bowl or something that's, you know, nutritional. But I was like, why would you be charging so much for something that's so healthy for people and then charging like, you know, three, four or five bucks for a burger that's really gonna, not going to help anybody? So I love the concept. I'm really going to check it out. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I like to work out too. So uh, I love the fact that you have this option. I would like to see you guys right next to a fitness connection, honestly. Yeah, we, we partner a lot. <laughs> yeah, we partner a lot with gyms um, and, you know, different fitness facilities, classes. We do pop-ups all the time. Actually, last week, we um, one of my friends did a nationwide toy drive, and we went and set up an Everbowl in the gym that the toy drive was at. And, you know, that's it's really the same crowd, right? We, we say fuel for movement as part of our brand and really mm -hmm. believe that when you fuel yourself with these things that come from Mother Nature, it treats you really well, you know? And, you know, healthy ingredients are a little bit more expensive, but that doesn't mean that we can't create a great business model you know, one of the things that I hate $18 and $20 acai bowls, um, it really frustrates me because a lot of our competition will blend it with ice and juice and put all these fillers and things in it where it turns into like a slushy more than an acai bowl. And mm -hmm. by us partnering, so we've gone to the length of partnering with the farmers down in Brazil, where we actually sell acai seed bracelets and, and create other forms of revenue. And we're breaking it down to every little ingredient so that consumers can get it in that 12 to $14 all in range. And, um, you know, and, and again, starting at 10 bucks, you can get a whole acai bowl good to go. And we really, we know that that's the future is accessibility and reasonably priced. We have to be there. Yes, exactly. And I confirm everything you just said is absolutely correct, <laughs> especially for those that are on a budget for sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, you know, because you gotta be you gotta be affordable, you gotta be available, you gotta be something that people want. And I mean, that is definitely something that everybody's gonna want to go for. So 
we're really going to check you out. Like right as soon as I leave here, I'm going to go check I'll, it out. I'll send you a couple gift cards here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and I would like to talk about your, your business side. Um, so I have a few questions like how, um, let's see, I have them all like, typed up over here. So as far as being an investment and a capital company, how do you balance your risk and return for your investments? Yeah. So my long-term goal and one thing that I've been really passionate about is helping people invest into things that they can see and touch. Um, I really believe the world is just a better place when we own little bits of it around us and we care about those things. You know, we should drive by a strip mall and own half a percent or one percent of that. We should drive by a business and own a little like we should help create things in our community. And ultimately, that's what we're trying to create at Sloan Capital. Um, I've done it in real estate where I started buying real estate and allowing other people to be part of it. But let's be real, back in 2021, real estate prices shot up through the roof. Um, the ROI on that was not near as good. Um, and so we looked for alternative ways to be able to have our, our partners capital. We have a lot of investors, a lot of people that um, want to see our growth. And so when we found Everbowl, we actually gave our investors the opportunity that instead of funding a strip mall, we could fund a repeatable business model. And we know the build out cost, the menu, the, all these things before we even open the business. And so what we did is to, to mitigate risk, we have no debt on our restaurants. We're completely mm -hmm. privately funded. People that live all over Dallas own pieces of the stores. They go to the stores, they take their kids to the stores, they cater to the stores, and they're part of helping that success. And then when they eat there in a month or two, they get a check back for dividends from their restaurant that they own and they're part of. And mm -hmm. so for me, it's creating this whole full circle thing. And I think if you fast forward five years or so, you're going to see multiple concepts, buying buildings, owning things, and, and creating a system that we can allow lots of people to be part of it. Um, we don't just need one person or one company to own everything. And I'm trying to facilitate the options for everyday people to have the diversification that I would have dreamed about many years ago. Mm -hmm. And thanks for being that option for people as well. So yeah, um, it really is so fun for me to be able to have people help create jobs, have them be able to come to our grand openings and know that they, you know, are part of that, see the growth, see the commercials, see the partnerships and, you know, get to meet and know our team and stuff like that. It's It's been extremely fulfilling um, on both sides. That sounds very enjoyable, for sure. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you're also looking for more franchisees to step in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the state of Texas is huge. Um, huge. You know, I always <laughs> joke, I mean, we're not joke, but, you know, the, the fact is if it was its own country, it would be the ninth largest in the world. And that's part of this too, right? I can't open every store across all of Texas. And so we partner with great people that want to take on different territories and we give them their territories. We support mm -hmm. them. They come and train in our stores. They have access to our people when they have questions and issues. And we grow the brand together all over the great state of Texas. It's fantastic. And how can someone a franchise with you? How can they get a hold of you? So if you just go to everbowl.com slash franchise, there's a form right on there. And depending on where you live, it goes to the right person. If you go to Texas, it comes to our company. Um, but Everbowl is franchising in about half the states um, across the country right now. They're really focused on building their brand and which cities they go to next. Um, but it's a really fun growth company. We're opening one or two a week across the country, almost one a month just in Texas. And uh, this next couple of years for us, you know, we've got some big partners with uh, Drew Brees and some other people and, um, you know, really doing our part to try and make healthy eating cool and accessible and, and reasonably priced. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Cool and accessible. We love that and healthy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cool has to be part of it, right? I mean, it nobody does. nobody loves to go eat a dry salad with eight almonds on it that cost $21. Right? right. I mean, it really just doesn't make you smile. And so if we can add some cool features, some celebrity partnerships, some loyalty programs that create active and fun, you know, there's so many ways that we can go down this brand to keep expanding into into people's lives. I agree. I agree. It sounds like something that it's really going to take hold, especially here in DFW, because we I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of fitness facilities and a lot of people that like to eat fresh here. Absolutely. So I would like to um, kind of pick your brain a little bit. 
<clears throat> so we have a lot of young entrepreneurs that watch our channel and also business owners. Could you give them some advice on how to get started and how to overcome, you know, any trials they have in their business? Yeah. So um, this is actually my favorite people to talk to is like people that are just starting their first business or college students that are dreaming, right? Because so many times we dream and then a few people around us will try and shut down those dreams, right? They're going to say, no, don't do that. No, whatever. And one of the things that you have to learn as an entrepreneur is how to laser focus and shut down the nose and the negativity because that's ultimately other people that are you know, they're, they're unsure that they could do it. So they want to, you know, tell you, you can't do it either. And what I will say is making that first step, taking the, you know, taking the initiative, going and starting and committing to figuring it out is so huge. And it can't be um, understated that we, you, as an entrepreneur, you have to get going. And once you get going and you take that step and you decide to make that move, and then the next day you take another step and the next day you take another step, all of a sudden you're going to look back and everybody that you know is going to be a mile behind you because they refuse to take that first step. And you just have to keep continuing every single day to move forward, regardless of the problems, regardless of the challenges, because those problems and challenges come with us no matter what, right? No matter what job we have, we're going to have problems and challenges. What if we could do it and actually be control of our own future? And it's it, that's the exciting part. Mm -hmm. And thank you for that advice. I know a lot of people are really going to take that and they're going to resonate with it because, you know, there's there's so many young folks out there that really have like the business mindset, but they're they're so focused on the negativity around them and the people that are just telling them that they can't. And it's our job as, you know, business owners and social media, you know, personalities to tell them, look, you really can do this. You you have the power, you have the ability. Absolutely. Yeah. And then also, if you fill your network with other entrepreneurs and people that think along that same way, that's oh. where things get really fun is building an entire network of people that love to do cool stuff and try new things. Because it's really hard to relate. If somebody goes to corporate every day and checks in at eight and leaves at five oh one p.m. and you know and has you know they want to get the little tiny like it's it, it's a different mindset than the entrepreneur that loves to go out and try things and create things and break things right. Um, oh. And so find other people that are like that, and you'll find this energy that is just so cool. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And the power of networking and teamwork. So Absolutely. I imagine you have a team behind you as well that helps to get you focused to where you need to go. I am nothing without our team. That's for sure. They know it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm probably sure they're going to watch this interview too and just be like, hey, okay, thank you for that. <laughs> Yeah, one of the really cool thing, you know, when we when we built buy and and you know own a lot of real estate, you don't need a huge team. A lot of it's outsourced and stuff. But as we've gone to build another company again, you know, we're mm -hmm. pushing over a hundred uh, team members now, and by next year, probably doubling that. And it starts getting really fun because you get to present these opportunities and work people through and and have them create their paths and their futures and stuff and. Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm nothing without our team. Our team, they're in the stores every day running and making this happen and, and interacting with our our customers and uh, beyond grateful for them. I love that. And I, I have to ask you, what is your favorite part of your journey so far? Uh that every day is a little bit different. You know, I love the fact that you know we can get up and we can try things and and create things and like I say, break things. Um, I love the fact that breaking things and being wrong is part of the journey because that's where we learn more from. And I'm just I'm excited every day to create new things because along the way that creates new things for other people as well. We get to watch our investors grow. We get to watch our employees. We get to watch our business. We get to create these new opportunities. We have other companies now that are you know calling us and saying, hey, will you please help us scale the Dallas? And I say, mm -hmm. hey, give me a couple of years, right? Because if we continue along this path of proving out one system across, you know, an, an area such as, as Texas, you know, we become pretty valuable as far as um, helping other companies be able to do this as well. So it's not just the opportunities now, it's always the opportunities and the things we get to do in the future. And um, it's fun to win. Absolutely. And I got to ask you, because I ask every business owner this. So what has been your hardest obstacle to overcome so far? I think the the one thing that, um, you know, no, it's really hard to get used to is as an entrepreneur, you take a lot of punches. 
You know, I mean, just an hour ago, you wake up with here's this issue and, you know, three hours before that and Saturday you open the mail and, you know, like, and, and so the, the hardest thing is separating out your life and your business because you're always having to be on, but that's also the joy, right? I mean, those problems are yours to solve. You get to be in control. You get to be in the driver's seat. And so one thing I've had to do that it was originally very difficult for me is look at all these problems and, and honestly be grateful for them because mm -hmm. so many people would trade any day to have certain problems and certain things. And as an entrepreneur, we shouldn't be mad when we have problems. We need to be expecting them and honestly grateful for them because if not for those problems, we wouldn't have our opportunities. I love that. And I'm gonna ask you one more question before we get off of here. If you could go back to you and, and tell your younger self some advice on your growth so far, what would you tell yourself? Don't be afraid to fail. So when you're first getting going, right, you want to have this like persona that all you do is win and you want everyone around you to, you know, because you're you're being vulnerable, right? You're trying something, you're going out. And so a lot of times, it, you know, I early on puff my chest and everything's great and blah, 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 blah. But when you build a network where when you do have problems, you can reach out to other people, they, they'll they talk about it and you find a network of people that are vulnerable and want to win and grow and learn together. That's the secret sauce. And so what I'll tell, like, I mean, if you're young and what I would tell myself is don't go figure out everything yourself. Find the right people, ask the questions, humble yourself, get around, learn about all that bad stuff. And it's amazing what can happen that you can that you can grow in those relationships. And then you can help that person out later and you create relationships with people you never thought you could by simply um, being vulnerable and talking and, and, you know, expanding. I love that. Well, thank you for being so transparent with all the questions today. I really appreciate it. And uh, I've learned so much about you, Justin, and I have so much respect for you as a professional in the business. Um, you know, you have so many nuggets to drop to people, and I love that. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to to talk with everyone around Dallas and the country that listens and excited to expand into their territory and uh, lots of grand openings coming up soon. Wonderful. And uh, before we get off here, can you tell our audience one more time your social media and where to find you? Yeah, Instagram and LinkedIn are where I hang out the most. Sloan Capital on both of those, Justin Sloan. All right. And then also the website, one more time. <laughs> uh, Sloan-Capital.com. Or if you're interested in opening an Everbowl anywhere in the country, www.everbowl.com slash franchise. Fantastic. So also, everybody, thank you for watching our interview today. Please go look us up. What's up, Dallas Magazine? We are all over. We're just doing something positive in DFW to provide you some inspiration. So go follow us. And thank you all for your time.